so we were looking at the calendar because I need to plan a flight home for my niece's wedding and realized we've been living full time in the van for four months. Four. And we've been getting tons of questions about living in the van. So we thought we'd do a kind of a answer the questions we've got for the first four months in a little a four month in review. Yes. Van life review, four months full time in a van. So we haven't killed each other yet. That's the good news. Yes. We probably should have held up a newspaper or something with the date to be proof that we haven't killed each other yet. For those of our friends who are betting, I'm curious to know who's still in the pool. <laughs> All right. So anyway, on to the questions, because we do get a lot of questions from you guys. We try to answer them all, but some of the places we've been going, we don't always have, you know, internet. So if we miss some of your questions, we apologize. But here we go. Number one, you ready, Kurt? I'm ready. What was the biggest adjustment that we had to make like right away, like within the first week of mm. moving into the van? Stuff. Stuff. Guys, we've been getting rid of stuff. For three months before we moved into the van, up till today, right? Yeah. We're still getting rid of stuff. Yeah, we are. Um, literally, estate sale, sold everything we own, donated everything else to charity, thought we had downsized perfectly for the van. So our first night in the van, we both wake up the next morning and Kurt's looking and like kind of frustrated because I had too much stuff. And I immediately opened up the sliding door and started throwing out throw pillows. The reality is it's just a <laughs> tiny space, guys. And so you, and, and we tried to plan for every event through our travels and we just had too much too stuff. Much and stuff. we, and it's still kind of tough to narrow it down. We're getting much, much, much better. Yeah. It's very livable right now. But I, I, I guarantee you there's still some stuff if we went through our drawers that we could easily Well, one thing of. we've talked about, and not lately, but I, I definitely think right before we cross into Mexico, which will should be December, for those of you that want to know that, I think we pull off somewhere, find a comfortable place, and, and go through and do one more clean-out session. Yeah. yeah. But for those of you who are thinking about possibly, um, you know, van life or van life full-time, I guess, um, we saw this on other YouTubes and heard other people say it of, you know, you don't need as much stuff as you're going to think. <laughs> it's absolutely true. And no matter how much we or anybody else tells you, you're going to have to figure it out on your own. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. So that was definitely the, that was the first morning. So it wasn't even within the first week that happened right away. So then we get asked a lot about, you know, have we had any bad things happen since we've moved into the van? And I think a lot of people think that's like a fear thing, a scared type thing of where we're parking and living in a van and is it scary? But when we get asked that, we, we those aren't our answers at all. So uh, what's the worst thing that's happened? Well, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. just I'll just give you a quick one. And then I think Snow's got one as well. But we were racing to get out of Orlando. Mm -hmm. We were trying to get the tr title transferred from a, a commercial van to a RV. A, a, yeah, an RV or what have you. And we were scrambling around getting all our last minute paperwork done and stuff. And we were excited to get out of Orlando, get on the road, get the Farewell well, USA well, tour started. Yeah, and we had made a commitment to go visit Kurt's old college roommate, David, Devin David. So they were expecting us. So we had a commitment of somewhere we needed to be in Atlanta that afternoon. So, so right before we get on the road to head out of Orlando, we go to the gas station to top off the diesel and I, I topped off the tank with gas. And so we spent, I don't know, four or five hours. We ended up having to siphon the, the entire tank. The good thing is he realized it before we started the car. So, and we don't, we didn't share this story before because it was a little bit embarrassing because we both know better. Our maiden voyage. Yes. <laughs> but we managed to siphon it out. It was a mess. We still made it to Deb and David's that night. So everything was okay. But always make sure you're putting diesel in your diesel tank. So. And then, and then we get up to Ocala. Uh, yeah. So then we're visiting my, my brother and his wife and my niece and nephew in Williston. Williston. And, um you know, saying our goodbye to them. And it was hot. We were still in Florida. Williston is just outside of Gainesville, Florida, for those that you don't know. It was July, right? It was, it was July. And in Florida, July, miserable. Plus, it was like a heat wave with 95% yeah. humidity. And um, we'd had dinner with my brother and we went out and we got in the van and we're going to sleep. And Vanna, our cute little white fluffy kitty that looks so sweet and innocent, likes to chew on cords. And we had our little thermostat gauge wire thing for the air conditioner kind of sticking out just a little bit. 
and we watched her. It was like slow motion, wasn't it? We saw her going for it, and her little teeth chomped right on the thermostat cord. Yeah, so no it had AC. a little ceramic diode or something on it, and she crunched that we thing. We heard it too. It was so loud. No air conditioning. The air conditioner stopped working. And it was a weekend. And when you live in a van, you don't really have a shipping address. Some people do if they stay in their vans locally, but we're traveling full time in our van. So we ended up overnighting two. We have a backup now. Um, but I would think that was the worst thing. The diesel tank it was issue. was so hot. You guys, <laughs> so we've gotten this comment before. I did a um, an air conditioning tech talk on, you know, how we run a 12 volt air conditioning system under chassis and i've gotten the question of why does anybody need air conditioning in a van and i'll go tell to florida. you go to florida in july 98 yeah. to 100 degrees yeah. 24 hours a day 95 it doesn't humid, cool down at night for a week at a time yeah you will understand why you need an air conditioner now, if Fanna would have chewed the cord in michigan or oregon or no idaho problem. it would have been fine yeah she picked florida yeah. So anyway, so those are the worst things. So there's no scary stuff that's happened. Um, that's it, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the next one is, have you had to make any modifications to the van since moving in? Yeah. So um, there's been a bunch of tweaks, to be honest with you. Um, especially, I think, maybe the first two months, I was tweaking on a lot of things, a lot of different things, nothing major. But it came very apparent that our screen, our magnetic screen door that we used on our sliders was not gonna work for us because our two kitties, if we ever opened the sliding door, they'd be waiting there. And G-Money was not afraid to dart out of that no. thing. And those magnets just wouldn't hold them. And we did a lot of work to try we to- We tried, we to, tried Velcro, to make we tried solid. snaps, and he could just get out. So, but the, the screen door, the rigid screen door that we have has been a game changer, right, Snow? Oh yeah, not just for the cats. The cats love it. Like when we get parked somewhere nice, we can open that door and they both just sit right down here on the floor and just look out and watch the birds or the lizards or people. But it, it's good for us. Yeah, it really opens up the van, especially when we're on a river or lake or ocean or and, scenic up and, over And not only just for getting air and more light in, but it also, so say you're parked, you know, next to a city park or something, and you pull over there and you make your lunch, and you're sitting here on the couch eating. People are walking by on the sidewalk, even though they can see in, having that little door there just kind of. It is nice. It's a almost like a privacy separation from the outside world thing, which is nice when you're in your home. Honestly, we haven't seen that in any of the van builds that we've reviewed before. I'm sure other people have them, but I'm going to tell you, um, it's been a game changer. Really, for us. really, really fantastic modification that Kurt made to the van. I did paint it, but Kurt built it like everything else on the van. <laughs> um, all right, so the next one we get is, how do you manage to live in such a small space? <laughs> this this goes back to our friends thinking you're gonna kill each other. Yeah, so honestly, it's a small space and the secret ingredient is chores. Chores. Chores, and uh, often frequently, uh, pick up after yourself, put things back where they go. We've developed a little system. Yeah. So for example, if, if I cook, which I do, I think 100% of the cooking or 95% yeah. of the yeah, cooking. He enjoys to cook though, yeah, guys. Yeah, Don't yeah, think yeah. that, he yeah, likes yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would much rather cook than do the dishes, which is what Snow does. Yeah. So I cook, she does the dishes. And an example would be, is if you're living in your house and you cook and you've had a nice dinner, and then you go sit down and you watch TV and the dishes might kind of linger in the sink. In a small space, they can't do that. So as soon as we're done eating, I wash the dishes. As soon as, you know, we hop out of the bed, I'm usually the last one out of the bed. I sleep in a little bit more than Kurt. Make the bed before we even get out of it. Uh, if you spill something on the floor, you pick it up. If you get something out of a cabinet, you put it away. It keeps the van tidy, doesn't waste space, and it's respect to the other people living in the van. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things that go with that. But, yeah, from taking trash out to just wiping things down, everything yeah. really, um, we find ourselves doing a lot of chores. And again, it's not a big space, so it's not a lot of stuff. It's a lot of little well, things, yeah. and it just really makes the van comfortable and smell good and clean yeah. and nice. And well, and it's, it I don't want to make it sound like it's a ton of work because at home you do the lawn, you mop the floor, you still do all the stuff. It's just, you can't put that stuff off in a van. It has yeah. to be done right away. And I think yeah. that makes everything go much more smooth. Yeah, would yeah. agree. Yeah. All right. What has been the biggest challenge? So, so for those of you that don't know us, uh, we decided to do this 
last summer, not this past one, but in you know the summer before and started building the van. But in our previous lives, we were road builders. I mean, I could tell you how to pour a bridge deck or install some guardrail, but filming a video to create content for YouTube and then editing it and figuring out how to do volume on them, that has been a challenge. I've never messed with any kind of editing software we don't even know what kind of equipment to get, what kind of microphone, whether this lens has bounce prevention, which I know is not the right word. We're still learning and so much we had to learn and still learn. And I think we will forever be learning. Yeah. Yeah. So it guys, so as we're navigating where we're going, we're looking for dump stations. We're trying to find where we're going to stealth park for the night and all the other things we have going on. We're also trying to learn to film and edit. And it's not just those processes that we're trying to learn, but it's right. It's also what kind of equipment do we need? How can we improve? And how do we tie these into all the different social media yeah. platforms? So well, that they and we also there? want to, we want to show, I don't want to make it sound like we don't enjoy doing it because if we didn't have something to do like that, I think both of us would be really bored. Sure. Um, but also we want to put out content you guys want to watch. So we're also learning that, you know, if y'all don't watch a video, obviously we videoed something they didn't want to watch so it's just a big learning curve yeah it's it, it's, it's just, a fun learning curve yeah we i mean we've gone from learning how to convert a van to <laughs> how to learn into a tiny space to how to film and edit and do some other things but it really has been and we got to thank you guys really yeah. for watching our videos we've yeah. been absolutely blown away with the number of people in this community who plugged into our channel and who've commented and, and they're we, helping us your so comments many, help us learn so many awesome comments and so much um, feedback and we really love that and appreciate that guys and we also appreciate so much that you guys share this with your friends yeah. that's amazing yeah. we, we really it's really cool that. so um so that's our biggest challenge what do we got next all right what's the favorite places that we've been so far so we've been traveling for four months now yeah full, so we're full-time van life full-time travelers yeah we don't have a home this is our home and it moves so what's what's your favorite place well, we started in florida so we've gone coast to coast mm -hmm. and uh you know the oregon coast mm -hmm. just absolutely blew me away and, and we'd spent a lot of time in the northwest uh, previous in our, our vacations and our travels yeah but, we loved washington but the oregon coast from uh, from the top to the bottom i mean from the elk to the whales to the seals to the tide pools to the haystacks the waves uh, the crashing monoliths, the waves the beaches the driftwood the people the crabs the people um just amazing uh amazing just yeah. really really enjoy that's a special place to i us. don't even think i could pick a favorite area of the Oregon coast. I mean, I know we enjoyed Bandon where we did the crabbing we did. and we enjoyed Cannon City Beach. Yeah. Which I think is the Goonies Beach yeah. right around in there. But the whole coast is just like that. So yeah. yeah, I agree, but I have an honorable mention. South Dakota, guys, sounds crazy. Surprised the heck out of us. It really did. Um, really cool. Yeah, just the, the state parks, uh, the Badlands were great. The state park, Custer State Park, so much wildlife. Everything's maintained. Everything is clear. And you guys need to drive Needles Highway. Yeah. You need to thread the needle. Thread the needle. Thread the needle. And I'll say one more thing. San Juan, San Juan Island, Washington is an amazing place yeah. too. Um, we won't we won't really comment about. It. There'll be a link here to the video from that. But that was a gorgeous place as well. You know, so. when we leave the, the States, when our Farewell USA tour ends and we cross over into our international travels into Mexico, I think maybe we do this after like each continent or each region. We'll do a top 10, break it down. Yeah. Yeah. But Oregon Coast, the favorite. South Dakota, high honorable mention. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, how are the cats handling full-time van life? <laughs> You know, sometimes I think those cats have handled it better than us. And, um, you know, they've learned how to walk on a leash, and that's been amazing. They love getting outside. They love seeing the big mammals like the buffalo oh. and the elk or deer. G and Vanna both think they could take down a buffalo. They do. <laughs> it's hilarious. And if you could see these guys whenever we spot and slow down and stop and we're filming and watching these big mammals, yeah. They're up on the dash or they're in the windows yeah. and they're at full and attention. And when, when we're moving from place to place, Vanna 
likes, she's got her little place up on the dash and we call it her vitamin D time. She likes to get up there and sun and just relax, especially when Kurt's driving. She's kind of Kurt's little driving buddy up there. G, he'll come up and hop in her lap and lean out the passenger window and just watch the world go by. And you can see his little ears twitch and his eyes light up when you see stuff. They love it. Yeah. They really do. So. Vanna's become our little baby goat. She, she uh, jumps. She loves jumping on things and climbing on rocks. If we're on a rock or we were in the redwood forest the other yeah. day, she's just hopping on trees and climbing around. Yeah. Yeah, we call her our little yeah. baby goat. But the so cats they, have they adjusted awesomely, yes. yeah. amazingly. So. Thank you for asking about them because they are our little fur babies and we love them. And they are going to one day be the most traveled <laughs> kitties in the whole entire <laughs> yeah. world. So. Yeah, they're, they're awesome. They love the van. So, all right. Um, what do you miss most from living in a normal house? Uh, there's a couple things that come to mind, but I guess probably the biggest is rolling out of bed. And so what? if you guys have seen the video, we'll put a clip in here, but if you guys have seen our bed, we call it the cave and it's very it's comfortable. It's wonderfully comfortable. And Snow loves it. She'll get back up there and edit and work and I love it. It's comfortable, it's a nice space. It actually makes the van feel like home. Yeah. It's quiet, we love a lot of things about it. But you can't roll out of the side. You kind of got to yeah. crawl down the end. And scoot out the end. And so in the middle so of the night. So if you got to pee in the middle of the night, <laughs> it's like this whole core crunch workout sliding thing. So yeah, we I are getting a core. We are getting a core exercise. Which but, won't hurt either one of us. Yeah, so. yeah. So. Um, I kind of agree with that one, but, but since I am the dishwasher in the van. She is. I miss my dishwasher and not necessarily the actual dishwasher of the house where you could put the dishes in it and it would wash them. But washing dishes in the van is a whole process because you got to worry about how much water you're using, how much water is going down into your gray tank. And the sink is really small. So like at home, if you have like a little cocktail sink on your island and your bar, just a small little 10 by 10 sink that's what, seven inches deep, it's hard to wash dishes in here. So. I, I miss my big kitchen sink. I miss a drying rack, with a big countertop, and I really miss the dishwasher. But it's not horrible, so. There's definitely something to be said about running water yeah. and uh, a live sewer system that, you know, we just don't have to have. And so we find ourselves looking a lot for, you know, fresh water, for dump yeah. stations and things like that. And it's always I, on your mind. It's always on your mind. And it, guys, we don't want to overplay this and make it sound like a bad thing. No. I mean, it's just another chore that we, we have, but guess what? We don't have to mow the lawn. There's a lot of other chores <laughs> that we don't I have. I don't have to vacuum the pool. Kurt doesn't have to mow the lawn. There's um, no blowing off the deck. Yeah, no yeah. No pressure washing. Yeah. But, so it's not a bad thing. But our footprint in terms of how much water that we do use and we waste and all that other stuff for anybody who's environmentally conscious is, is we've really, reduced really our water small. usage. And so on some levels, that's something to be proud of. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just part of it. All right. So we get asked this a lot. Um, friends, family, some of you guys have sent us little personal messages. Do you have any regrets? No regrets. No, <laughs> I have zero regrets. Um, I, if anything, doing this has taught us some things. And um, I don't want to say I wish we would have done it sooner because our life before was good and it all had purpose and meaning and everything happened for a reason. And we didn't hate our previous life. We just knew we wanted to change. So no regrets. And it's actually taught us to slow down. Yeah. You know, living in a van certainly comes with some limitations, and we just talked about some of those with the water and some of the other things, but honestly, freedom. it gives us so much freedom. I mean, we've seen, in the last four months, we've seen some of the most amazing things and met some super amazing, cool people in all different locations, and um, it's been so cool. And we've been able to open our sliding door, look at our screen with our keys, and look at these amazing ocean yeah. views, and more yeah, it's, it's, it's on, on the other world's behalf it's not always that way sometimes we use a parking lot or a rest area but that's by choice because we're moving from place to place if we stumble up if we spent three days at that place on the california coast the other day because it was perfect and although we do have to plan a little bit in this new life and especially once we cross into international we'll have to plan a little bit more um ahead of schedule but the freedom yeah it's just i try to explain it and i can't and the way i tell my family is i just wished everybody had a van and could go with us there you go so no regrets no short regrets. answer 
All right, guys. Um, yeah, I hope that answered a few of the questions that we're getting a whole bunch. If you have any more, put them in the comments. We'll get them answered. We really do appreciate your comments. We yeah. do read them and we do answer them. And uh, we enjoy receiving those. And we definitely appreciate you guys watching our channel. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye, guys. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. And subscribe to our channel and go ahead and hit the notification bell so you know when we put out future videos. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in a few days.